Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So Coach Rob texted me last night and said, hey, you going to be in early? I'm like, yeah. He's like, got something to show you. I'm like, okay. It's usually an old racket. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is a new member, um, Artie. Artie writes, big fan of your channel and content, sending a DM on Instagram, interested in an hour of your time for pro shop consultation. Thanks again. Oh, thank you, Artie. I appreciate you being a coffee club member. Uh, we'll get right back to you. Sounds like you might want to open up a pro shop. Yeah, I could definitely help you with that. If you want to join my coffee club or just buy me a coffee, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you want to support the channel, super thanks is the way, link is below. Thank you all so, so much. So yeah, guys, if you want to, you know, be part of the club, get your welcome gift, need to talk to me, right? Click on, be a member. Hey, we can chat. All right. Thank you guys. House blend today. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to wait for Coach Rob to bring me, um, sounds like an older racket, but not sure what it is yet. Okay. So we'll hang tight for Coach Rob. Hey, Harry. Good morning, Rob. Good oh to see my you. God. When was the last time you saw one of these? 1991. <laughs> That's about where that grip's from, and those strings are probably from there as well. I found it in my in-law's garage. Uh, I was going through things, and I started looking at I'm like, Taylor. I'm like, oh, my God, this must be Taylor Bedillion's racket that I, you know, when he was done using, I probably grabbed it and was hitting balls with my um, wife, and she left it at her parents' uh, garage, or somehow it got there. I don't know. Maybe I left it there, but um, yeah, here it is. So I reached out to uh, to Taylor, took us some pictures. I said, hey, I found your racket, I think. And he said, yeah, that's it. I won a lot of great matches with that racket. And I said, do you want it for the uh, wall of fame in your man cave? And he laughed back and said, no, no, do something with it. And I said, I, it might make a video. <laughs> so here we are. That's awesome. I so if you guys don't know, Hammer 5-2. So this was kind of towards the early stages of hammer technology when they started to hammer everything out. Right. Let's say. Um first it was like two seven, um three three six, and then they decided to go into a control player series in which they went thinner beam 95 light heavy but in a player's type of stick so back in the day when i was at city college um a couple of the guys actually used this one and actually a couple of the women's on the team actually used this one too so heavy heavy in the head um easy to come through but you definitely feel the weight all right here and it helped plow through the ball this is dirty <laughs> <laughs> and, and see cobwebs there's too. cobweb it was in the garage for a good 20 years probably <laughs> and looks like i'm gonna have to clean this up uh but we'll we'll clean this up let, let me just check one quick thing let's see what tension it has we know this this uh <laughs> Grip has seen better days, but but man, this brings back so many memories. Like literally, as soon as I saw your racket, it said 1991 in my head. How many years ago was that? 32. Yeah, it, it said error the first time. It may not <laughs> read tension. It's so old. 33. 33. It says, okay. That's actually not bad. Maybe the strings are dead. Dead. Here, I'll show you 33. Maybe they're just stuck together. So, so, so it wouldn't I think, I think the cobwebs are. Yeah, it said 33. So, the, 
according to this, on the 95, it's 48 pounds of tension still. But it might be stuck together. Yeah. Is what I'm thinking. Actually, no, feel that. Hmm. Ain't yeah. horrible. No. Sounds brittle. Yeah. Well, maybe Could one hit. worse, though. One hit. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to fix the grip. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> need some gloves. Four and three eighths. I mean, it might need a cutter. Yeah. <laughs> so Coach Rob isn't like the only one that brings me stuff like this. Um, customers bring me stuff like this all the time from back in their high school days, let's say. and Or garage. Or garage. <laughs> high school days garage. Or their dads or their mothers or whatever. And I have to do a little surgery. Oh, look at that. So that's an over, that was an overgrip on there. Look at that. It's fused. Remember I've told you you put an overgrip on and you ruin two grips? Well, this is what it looks like 30 years later when you fuse two grips together. <laughs> That's why I'm not touching it because yeah. my hand will be black. I'm surprised it came off in one piece. Yeah, me too. And it's not like crumbs or right. ash. ash here. Let's take, we're going to take this off too because this will literally make our hands black. Oh, wow. Taylor must have been a sweater. Well, it was sweating in the garage. <laughs> it didn't. Look at that. Sucks. Oh, there's the ash. There we go. I wonder if the staple's still in there. I'll bet it is. Oh, yeah. But it's rusted, too. We were using staples back then, for sure. Okay, I'm at the end here. This ain't horrible. I'm sure if I handled it, it would be worse, but... It's a little rust. What is that? Look at that. Look, the, those are the, the staples. Looks like somebody went crazy with the staple gun here. My guess is the uh, butt cap was coming loose <laughs> and we had to do some surgery back then. And yeah, there's a lot of staples here. They're all rusty stable staples too. What is, is that a staple? Is that a staple, Coach Rob? I think so. Yep. Ooh, what the? Sounds like it. Yep. Yep. That was a staple. Somebody stapled the, the grip on with a, it's like a regular staple there. Yeah, back in the day, we were using the staples, too. Like the stuff from those classrooms? I don't know if it was. I think it was a little more heavy duty than that, but. Okay. So it's time for a little glove work for me to clean this puppy up. So I feel like this is like, was it this old house? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the next thing we do there is uh, put some gloves on and then see if we can you know, strip it down. <laughs> do we need to use some uh, compound rubbing or something to get that off? we put some gloves on first. So this is what you do when you have a 30-year-old racket and you try to resurrect it. Make a big old mess. And then when Leonard comes, you say... Sweep it up. <laughs> You're the mop-up crew. <laughs> Dustbuster, anyone? Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, let me do one quick thing and, and see if uh, see if my hand turns black or blue or whatever first. Well, right now, it's going purple. Yes. Well, the good part is it came off. That's the main thing. So I'm going to, oh, yeah, here we go. Should we do that over the garbage can? Yeah, I'm doing it over the desk so that we could actually see the evidence. Okay. Look. So look at my hand. Look. Ooh, look at that. 
Coach Rob, can you grab me a grip? Uh, Hydrozorb, maybe black, Hydro Pro Black or something. Wilson Pro Performance? If you really want to. It is a Wilson. Okay, that's fine. Or should we go Sublime? No, no, that's fine. We'll do Pro Performance. I'm not a big Sublime fan. Since, dang, that overgrip. So, Nurse, can you prep that for me? Pro performance. Wow. Look at my hand. So, sometimes, sometimes when this wasn't balanced correctly, uh, they would put lead strips right here. And, it would, and then they would put the double-sided tape on top of that. So when if you were putting, taking this off, you would be ripping off the lead, lead tape sometimes. And I was always wondering as a kid, why is there lead underneath this handle? Well, somebody jacked it up in the factory and quality control wasn't great. So they try to rebalance it literally by just sticking lead tape in this handle. So, but that was back in the day. I haven't seen that done in maybe 20 years or so. Speaking of quality control. I think Wilson failed on this one. <laughs> Damn. Speaking of quality control here. Hey, I got a new segment for us now that I thought about it. Yeah. This old racket. <laughs> <laughs> forget this old house is this old racket take it out a little bit just to make sure it sticks and i can't believe one thing on this racket this thing isn't still good i know to break off yeah. usually it's so dry yeah as soon as i touch it it just disintegrates right we're talking about that right there because it's got to be 30 years old too probably came with the racket Four and three eighths grip. Here, you can handle it now. All right, when we play. All right, should we string or what do you think? Let's string. Let's string. Okay, we'll do some. I think that's just probably synthetic the gut. The heck now. is this? That's probably some Wilson Sin gut. Oh yeah, that's what it looks like. All right, let's throw some decent string on it. All right, so since we decided to restring this thing. Uh, Man, it's probably been here for at least 20 years, uh, the strings. And this was strung, looks like one piece, because you see a knot here, and you see a knot there. I'm going to, let's see if, when I hit the first string, if it has any tension, and if it, like, causes a little dust storm. So let's go real close. Whoa, there's tension. Not so much on the cross, but I like to cut it like this because I relieve the middle, but just cut it as fast as you can. Yeah, this is just sin gut, regular old sin gut. Does it even, it says right there. What does it say right there? Wilson Synthetic Gut or Performance Plus, whatever that thing says. Can't read it anymore, but Sin Gut. Yep. Wilson Sin Gut. I wanted to see if it actually said Performance Plus because that was their Sin Gut uh, way back in the day. They don't even call it that anymore. Just wanted to put a nice name on it so that uh, people think it's, oh, it's performance. No, it's performance plus. <laughs> oh, Wilson. So it comes off easy. So it's not fused in there, at least. I feel dust on my hand, though my fingers okay so now that we got it off um to the falcon all right guys so i was thinking about this and uh coach rob 
would, if he was still here this minute, he would say, oh, put on some NXT. Put on some NXT. Well, I'm going to actually put on some X Natural here from my friends at Selinko. It's supposed to be a really, really soft string, kind of NXT like. I'm going to tell Coach Rob, I was like, hey, Coach, it's some new Wilson strings. It's called Natural, and it comes in black. I wonder if he'll get it, because <laughs> since I already got him once with the uh, with the uh, Dunlop string, <laughs> telling him that it's it's a new Natural, and as soon as I told him that, I don't know if you guys remember the video, but he was like, "Oh yeah, this is great, this is great." Ah. It's Dunlop. Whoa. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty sure from what I remember, this ends on the bottom. I'm almost 100% sure of that. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. So, yes, it's going to end on the bottom. So, what I do is I count where the strings go up and where it goes down. It's actually a very simple process. There are six holes here. This string goes up that way. That one comes back down. This one goes back up that way. So down, up, down, up, down. So I can tell this is a cross. That's a cross. It's, those grommets are facing that way. And these are facing this way. So this last main comes back down this way. So two piece it is for this string job for me. All right. So I'll string this at 55. And uh, we'll see you when uh, when I'm done. All right. So, Coach Rob, um, Taylor Bedillion's racket. Yep. He must have played in like 1990, 91, 92 ish, because that's when this racket was in its glory days. Right. Yep. Um, where is he now? He is now in Spokane, uh, Washington. He's teaching uh, there. Um, he was a you know top junior in NorCal back in the day top in the country, and went on, uh, played at Santa Clara, University of Santa Clara. I think they got up to top 25 in the country then. And um, yeah. I taught him back in the day. His dad was the pro at the club that I grew up at and that I worked for. And so I worked with him a lot. We hit a lot together and uh, still stay in touch. So All right. So 30 um, years later, we, we took out the strings that was sitting in there for who knows how long. Redid um, the grip. Redid the grip. Um, with gloves on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I showed you what I had to do, right? Yep. Um, this old racket. And so with the strings, um, I put on black NXT. Cool. Did you believe me? No. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> it's actually super soft, 17 gauge string by Selinko. It's a multi. Okay. So what did you think of the racket? I, you know, I had great aspirations, but I think Taylor got all the really good hits out of it before he, <laughs> before he shelved it and uh, before it ended up in the in-laws garage. It still felt pretty good, but it, it wasn't like, ooh, wow, I'd still want to go play with this. Right, right, right. I don't know if it was the string, the tension, 
Um, I just was getting tired and couldn't find the sweet spot as often, but really, I did it at 55. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, it was, I think it was me. I definitely know it wasn't Taylor, but, <laughs> and I know you hit pretty well with it too. I, um, it, I had to do a cer certain things with it though. I wasn't quite, um, used to the hammer technology, um, as I used to be, as we both probably used right. to be. Uh, when I dropped the racket, I noticed that it dropped a little harder and then I had more to pull. Therefore, if I was late on it, that it would actually hit the net. Uh, but when I caught it correctly, it actually had a good amount of power, right. which I was not really expecting from this beam. Right. Um, my experience with this racket 30 years ago was like, eh, you know, it wasn't my racket. I needed something with a slightly wider beam, um, 4.0. 4095 is what I played with the hammer, the brown one. And this, you know, lacked power, obviously, and uh, um, had a little too much control for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there you go. Because I was lazy. Right. <laughs> All right. So, but I mean, it, it surprised me that it actually felt good today, you know, when I really wasn't a huge fan of it 30 years ago. But, right. but no, it's good. I've, I'm, you know, I was surprised. Um, and thank you, uh, Taylor, for keeping it around, not donating it. Right. Or maybe he did donate it, and that's how it ended up in the in-law's garage. Oh, that's true. <laughs> At least it didn't wind up in a Goodwill. That's and true. And then wind up in the in-law's garage. Right. Right. So, Coach Rob, hey, it's good to try stuff like this with you. Yeah, it was fun. It yeah. was fun to kind of think back into the old days and um, get out and hit, to, hit with it. And thanks for restringing it. And it was... Uh, a fun uh, tactical operation of you uh, <laughs> carefully taking the grip off and putting this uh, Wilson Pro Performance on. Yeah, no, thank you. We will continue with this series of this old racket when, uh, <laughs> when Coach Rob brings me another old racket. All right, Coach Rob, thank you, as sure. always. Um, and we'll look forward to the next racket. Definitely. All right, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Well, this could be it, Harry. Oh, Harry, great contact. Now, the idea, Harry, is we need it to land in the blue. I know you're kind of starting out here. Let's try it again, Harry. Somewhere in the blue space on the other side of the net. Um, Harry, that's a great shot. I think you even hit it on the blue on court three, Harry. It's okay. I, I didn't really specifically say our court. I just said blue. So job well done. Let's try again. Keep it in our space on our court. This says number one. Here we go, Harry. Give it a shot. Oh, Harry. No, I didn't say hit the number one. Want a coach with positive energy like Coach Rob? Find what your game is looking for at playyourcourt.com. Oh, Harry, you swung and missed. I bet you can watch the ball a little longer. Try to keep your head still. Oh, Harry. Nice try. 